Greetings Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home. Just some news in the body of Christ. We continue to invite you to join in remembering all those on Trinity's prayer list, and especially those uh, who are in the midst of the struggle against the coronavirus in our country. There are many places in our country that are struggling right now, especially essential workers and healthcare workers. So please remember them in your prayers. Also, we have been made aware that there are some needs at our local food shelf. And so if you are able in your next grocery run uh, or are able to support our food shelf, they are looking for physical donations of particular items. If you are able to donate any of these items in the near future, it would be greatly appreciated and help support our community and those who have hunger needs. Those are all the announcements and news in the body of Christ that I have at this time. So I invite you to gather for worship.
Let us join in the prayer of the day. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom that we may be rooted in the way of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of shale. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. For our children's message for this service, I'd like to show you something. This, this is an onion. I have onions in my garden. However, this onion is not from my garden. You see, my onions in my garden look a little bit like this. As you can see, you can't really tell that there are onions there at all. I planted the seeds and I didn't quite know what they were supposed to look like when they came up. And so I was waiting for them to grow and the grass grew. And pretty soon I could not tell if there were any onions amongst the grass. And there might be, there might be onions in there, but I'm not sure. And so I've decided not to pull everything out of that patch, but to wait, to wait and see if I could tell where the onions were, if they grew just a bit bigger. Today we have a parable that Jesus shares, and it is about someone who sowed, and they sowed wheat, and someone else sowed weeds, and both grew together. And the servants of the master, the person overseeing all of this, said, should we just tear out the weeds, get rid of them? And the, the one overseeing the crop said, no. Because if you pull out the weeds now, you'll pull out the wheat as well, and all will be lost. Instead, let's let them both grow. And at the end, they will be separated out, and we will have the harvest. Now with this parable, I think sometimes it can sound a little scary, as if we're weeds that someone's going to pluck. But I don't think that's the case. I think God is recognizing Jesus as he tells this parable to those gathered, recognizes that there are things in this world that are broken. There are things in this world that aren't what we want them to be. And yet, sometimes those things that are imperfect are part of us. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It just means that we need to grow and that there will be a time when those things that aren't what God wishes will no longer be. And we, whom God loved and created and grew, will still be here because we have forgiveness, because we have God's love, because we have God's promise of eternal life. Things won't always be as hard or as broken as we maybe know them to be. And that's the promise that we have, even if we can't see it yet. So let's have a prayer, and I invite you to repeat after me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the garden of this life, and we ask you to help us grow and also weed so that all things may show your love 
and your care. And all God's children said, Amen. The Gospel for the service comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may can be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and Jesus' disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So where are your onion patches. The place where it is indiscernible about what to root out and what to keep. Where there are things that are meant to be there placed by God and things that are not what God wishes. With any parable, we're invited to look at Jesus' words as a whole, to walk around it, and walk through it, and wonder. Jesus here names that there's an evil one and that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And yet he also names that there is someone who sowed that would not let the good be forsaken and destroyed with the bad. And that there would be a day when they would not be so mixed together. I learned this week about a weed called darnel. It's a hindrance to wheat farmers, for where it exists, it grows side by side with the wheat, and it can look very similar until the heads of seed appear. And you can't tell which is crop and which is weed until the very end. And yet, if they are continuously mixed together, it can destroy the flavor of the wheat and the crop that is gathered does not work and is not fruitful. And in our parable, the pulling out of the weeds would destroy the field, the good that was there. And also within this reading, there's a very interesting word in Greek that has slid in among this story. It's very short. It's the word called let. 
The master says, let them grow together. Permit them. Allow them to be in the midst of one another for the sake of the harvest. Now that word in Greek is used in other places in Matthew. However, in other places in Matthew, it is translated as forgive. I think when we read this parable, I think some of us might want to say, aha, I know which is good and which is bad. If we could just get rid and then just name the things we know that plague our world. Racism and sexism, ageism and elitism and classism and narcissism, rooting them all out. If only, if only. And yet we know in our lives, each one of those isms exists in us. Perhaps we need to notice that in this parable, it is not the workers who get to discern when things should be harvested. It is not the workers who finally declare how this will be resolved. Perhaps we need to leave that to the master. And as we grow, repent and forgive of the evils that we see in the midst of things that are good and of God. Perhaps we are called to name those isms to each other by naming each other's behavior instead of just labeling someone good or bad. Perhaps it's more about an adjustment. I've seen corn grow in the cracks of cement because that was where the equipment was cleaned out and put away and some seeds fell and there it grew. It doesn't mean that all corn is a weed. It's just not working in the place it's supposed to be. It is a cash crop for many, but in that particular place, in what it is doing, it's not doing any good. In that strange spot where it was intended to grow as a weed, well, there are different ways that it should be. There is good news that the good will not be sacrificed just to make the field neat. It will grow to the harvest even in the midst of troubles and evils and things sown that are broken. And yes, there are all those isms that do not belong in the kingdom of God. And so we have that word forgive, for with it comes repentance, forgiveness, and the ability to be different than we were before. The one who tells this parable says that that which is not of the kingdom of God will not last forever. Through the fire of God's Holy Spirit, we can be renewed in this life and have those promises even in the midst of growing. I'm comforted in the fact that the God who walked this earth, Jesus, as he shared these parables, says that brokenness will not last. And I am encouraged that we have these parables so that me, we may weed out, clean up, and be rooted so that a better garden can grow. Amen.
Let us join in the prayers of intercession. I will end each petition with, teach us your way. Please respond with, you are full of compassion. Let us pray. God of the church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time, many Christians cannot assemble and gather to nurture one another for growth in the faith, especially many places where people cannot gather at all. Tend your people, give us strength through your word, and help us to know that you are always with us. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the earth, we praise you for a wondrous creation. We mourn the places where creation groans for rebirth. Nurture green spaces. Send rain where there is drought. Protect animals from poachers. And show us how to care for your earth. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given to us in this country. And we mourn the many people who are still poor and dispossessed, for whom racism has continued to distort their lives in our society and places where violence breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities in which all people are created equal, where disputes are settled without violence and save us from, from preserving a past that has been harmful to many. Bring about your healing. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of humankind, we praise you for wherever health and happiness prevail. And yet we know that many suffer. Each day, thousands more contract the virus. Renters are facing eviction. Medical workers are exhausted. And the some sick have no access to health care. Many people are broken by sorrows. Open our hearts to care for them. Watch over them and bring them comfort. We especially remember now all those on Trinity's prayer list and all those whom we name now in our hearts that need your healing, your love, and your care. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. Holy God, we give you thanks for all the saints who have died in the faith. We especially remember Ruthie Johnson and all those who we know and have known in our lives whom we mourn. We especially name now all those we hold in our hearts. Comfort the morning. Strengthen those who need your healing, and at the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers and all the needs that we have ourselves to you, knowing that you are with us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Receive the blessing, drawn from the words of the very end of Matthew's Gospel. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything that Christ has commanded you, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And remember always that God is with you to the end of the age. Amen.